Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be talking about the Ultimate Team Deathmatch loadouts. What guns to use, what attachments to use on them, and what gadgets you want to run with them as well. Now I really do wish Battlefield 4 had better weapon balance so that this wasn't such an easy decision to make or trying to figure out, but unfortunately there are just two guns that stand way above the rest of the pack. That is the AEK and the ACE-23. And when outfitted right, they just absolutely dominate everything else that comes up against them. We'll begin by looking at the AEK. Now my preferred way to run this weapon is with a suppressor and angled foregrip. That angled foregrip is going to allow you to basically burst fire, very accurate bursts and take people down at longer ranges. And in close quarters, you're not going to really need to burst fire at all. You can pretty much full auto or do 10 round burst then take people out no problem. The rate of fire is 900 rounds per minute. An absolute beast and that suppressor is going to keep you off that minimap. This is just the ultimate team deathmatch gun for maps that require closer to medium range engagements. It also works really well on maps where there aren't too many players. If you're going 64 player TDM then the suppressor is not really going to be that big of a benefit. But if you're say playing 24 player or even 32 player TDM, the suppressor is going to keep you off that minimap, allow you to get a lot of flanks and down people faster than they can down you. There's few guns in this game that can out damage the AEK. The Coyote Red Dot Sight is going to give you a nice unobstructed field of view and the suppressor is actually going to add to that because if you have muzzle flash that can sometimes get in the way of the RDS clarity. There's going to be no muzzle flash on this weapon and it's just going to be nice clear sailing. Things to watch out for with this gun are its reload speeds. 2.3 seconds for the short reload isn't bad at all. In fact for a gun that fires this quickly it's incredible. It's one of the reasons why the AEK is so flipping good. But if you run through all of your ammo in your magazine you will hit a 3.6 second long reload and that's really hard to deal with in close quarters. Fortunately the suppressor really helps with this because because if people aren't running to gun you down in between reloads, then it doesn't really matter too much how long that reload takes. Another thing to watch out for with this gun is the recoil, which is why I've essentially designated it to a short range to medium range assault rifle. You can use it at long range, and I've seen a lot of people practice with this weapon, do very short bursts with the gun, and they can still maintain pretty decent accuracy at those longer ranges. You just have to be pretty darn good with it and get a good feel for it. That being said, there's going to be better assault rifles for longer range combat, so although it's not really an Achilles heel of the AK, it's not one of its strong suits either. Now again, your reason for choosing this weapon should be largely based on the map you're playing. If you end up on a long range map like some of the naval strike maps, you definitely don't want to go with the AEK. You're going to be severely outgunned at those longer ranges and you're not going to get any of the benefits from the suppressor. If you find yourself in a close quarter map but it's incredibly clustered, say it's a 64 player TDM lockers map, which I don't recommend playing just in general because they're very untactical, but if you do find yourself in that mode, you can consider taking off the suppressor and just putting a flash hider on there instead so you don't get that muzzle velocity penalty. Now how about the other weapon on this list? Of course we've got the ACE-23. This is something I recommended at the beginning of Battlefield 4 as one of the best assault rifles in the game and it's something I still recommend. This is an all-around powerhouse. You can use it in any situation. It's going to be good in any situation. Obviously extreme close quarters you're probably still going to want an AEK but it's not like this is somehow going to lose the fight every time. If you're a good player, an accurate shot, you're going to down plenty of people regardless of what weapon they're carrying. Its rate of fire is very good at 770 rounds per minute. Not overly insane, it's not going to be one of those crazy fast time to kill weapons, but considering its recoil and reload speed, it's incredibly competitive. One of the main benefits of this weapon is a very low side to side recoil. It pulls a little bit more to the right, but ultimately the side to side recoil is not what you want to worry about. It does have a bit of vertical recoil, but this can be tamed with the right attachments, and once you do tame it, this gun just isn't really going to kick at all. And a gun that doesn't kick with 770 rounds per minute rate of fire, you're going to be tearing people up regardless of what range you engage them at. Now there's many different ways you can set up this weapon and at the end of the day regardless of what attachments you have on here it's probably still going to be a pretty darn effective assault rifle. However the way I like to tame the recoil of this weapon and still have it cater to my playstyle is I use an ergo grip or a vertical grip. They do the same thing. This basically allows me to maintain a little bit better accuracy while I'm strafing around which is something that I need especially for dodging shots left and right. 
and then I put the muzzle brake on here to try and tame some of that vertical recoil. It has pretty significant vertical recoil, but the muzzle brake seems to tame it completely, and I can pretty much just aim for the head all day long. The muzzle brake will reduce your accuracy ever so slightly, but I find it's not enough to make this gun ineffective at those longer ranges. You'll see here that I'm using the weapon on lockers, generally speaking a close quarter map, something that I could easily use the AEK on, but the Ace-23 by no means has any trouble killing people on this map. Close quarters, medium range, long range, this gun is going to be very effective. It's kind of one of those assault rifles you can just grab, not really think about what situation you're in, but know that you have a pretty darn good chance at winning any one-on-one -on -one firefight, regardless of the range that you engage your opponent. Now its reload time is 2.1 seconds for the short reload, which is excellent for close quarter combat. It's not the fastest out there, sure the uh, M416 reloads at 1.85 seconds, but it's definitely fast enough to deal with most foes in most close quarter situations. If you do go through your whole mag, you're going to end up reloading at 3.1 seconds, which isn't ideal, but it's a bit faster than some of the extremely long reloading guns. In many ways, the Ace-23 is very similar to the M416. In fact, some people prefer the M416. One of the benefits that the Ace-23, however, has over that gun is lesser recoil with a higher rate of fire, whereas the M416 has a much faster recoil. Reload. And if I had to choose between the two, I would pretty much go with the H23 every time because I'll take damage and accuracy over reload speed any day of the week. Now let's talk about some of the gadgets with this kit. I've got the med bag, which is an essential for any assaulter class that might actually switch out to the med pack when the next patch rolls around. The med pack is going to have some advantages over suppression. We'll have to see how things play out. I think I'm probably still going to stay with the med bag though. A good tip with the med bag is to check it out when you know you're not in immediate danger. You don't want to be killed while in the throwing animation. That's pretty much the worst. And then throw it out at corners where you know there's enemies around the corner or you know that you're about to get engaged in a firefight. Having it on the ground before you take damage is always beneficial. Even though suppression prevents its healing effect so it doesn't give you any benefit while you're engaged in that immediate firefight, when you pop back around the corner to take some cover, heal up a bit, you can then just focus on your reload and scouting for other enemies that are potentially trying to flank you rather than throwing down a med bag. It's always nice to just try and make the order of operations a little bit more efficient and in my opinion if you can get that med pack down before you even engage in the firefight, you're one step ahead of the game. Secondary gadget is almost always high explosive grenade launcher especially on maps that have lots of destruction in them that allows you to kind of blaze your own trail through the map and get a lot of cool flanking routes but if you're playing with a group of friends or at least in just an organized server where your squad is all playing together and being good with team tactics then it can be beneficial to switch over to those defibrillators and keep your squad up and running. Now if you're having trouble in Battlefield 4 and you really want some guns that are going to give you a pretty big advantage over your opponent try out the two that I mentioned here and make sure to use them in the right situations. If you're already an excellent Battlefield player, then mix it up a bit. Use some other guns. Use stuff that you're not used to using all the time. Try and get some dog tag unlocks. Constantly challenge yourself as a player and throw yourself out of your comfort zone. This will force you to learn new tactics and you might be surprised when you come back to use the same overpowered weapons that you're using before. You might just have a few new tricks up your sleeve. As always guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.